This was as innocent as California dreaming. A darker side of rock and roll was surfacing on the East Coast, tough, gritty, decadent, led by Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground. Today, music reporter Rona Elliott says Reed is still making urban rock. Good morning, John. And that's true. Lou Reed was one of the most influential writers and performers to emerge from the 60s and retain that position. His walk on the wild side is a classic, and he's enjoying his biggest success in years. With his new album, Mistrial, and Lou has found a new audience. While some are first discovering Lou Reed as in the Amnesty International Benefit concerts last June, others have been fans of his since the 60s. Lou's gone through many transformations in his 20-year career. Lou in his glitter rock days of 1975. Lou with the infamous Velvet Underground in the mid-60s. When we formed the Velvet Underground, I was right out of college, and uh, I had these great novelist ambitions about it. I wanted uh, the Velvet Underground to, to write about adult themes. I really wanted to make it a uh, rock and roll songs about things that really mattered. As part of the Velvet Underground, you were the original cult band. From my point of view, you went out on the edge further than anyone else. What does that time period look like? Well, see, I now? never considered it the edge. You know, if it had been a novel, no, would, nobody think twice about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing that I, it's people just had, had, and I think still have a contempt for the form. It's uh, what we were writing, what I was writing about was no big deal. It's just it hadn't taken place in rock and roll. Right. I just thought of the rock and roll, roll format kind of like a sonnet, a contemporary sonnet. Mm -hmm. You know, three chords, turn it up to 11, and uh, there you go. A lot of people think the things you've written were all autobiographical, but that has not been the case. No, no. Uh, if it was all autobiographical, I'd be dead a hundred times. <laughs> and the other thing is that there's not enough about me that's that interesting to just write about myself. But I always wrote about the people that are around me, but sometimes you take uh, something happened one person, plus something happened another person, plus something that happened to the third person, you put it all together, and it may still not be right, so you change the facts a little. But and then other times you just make, make things up, but I wanted it to be really real. It's like, uh, it's like Clint playing Dirty Harry. I wanted you to really believe I was like that. That was really what it was all about. Hey, honey. Tell me about what it's like making urban rock and roll, because that's what you make. What do you draw from it? Well, that's the way I am. I don't, I don't have to draw from anything. That's when I'm around. That's the way I hear it. I mean, as, as a distinction between... I didn't like... We went to Montserrat once and recorded. That wasn't a good experience for me. You know, palm trees and <laughs> the ocean and the sand's too relaxing. I need to hear traffic. You know, just going to the studio in New York's an adventure. You know, whether you get there, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what shape you get there or what happened to you, you know, so arguments between people that get kind of extreme sometimes. And that gets into the music. What about the switch? Again, this is my perception from your previous body of work, which could have been considered on the darker side, to mistrial, which is very loving, much lighter, it's very... Just, I write about the things around me, and I'm around different people now. I'm around different things. I didn't want to, uh, dr <laughs> that whole Warhol drug thing to be my Oki Finoki swamp, you know, like, that's, that's my milieu, that's what I write about, that's the genre I'm involved in. I didn't want to do that, I was passing through, like I said, I wasn't close to any of these people. I'm not saying that in a sarcastic way either, I just, I was not, I didn't have any very close friends in it, I was very much on the outside, even though I was in the middle of it. You work with Kevin Godley and Lyle Cream, the award-winning video directors. Uh -huh. Uh, for no money down, uh -huh. and they have a... I'm a lot better looking than my ro robot. You have a robot whose face comes off. Yeah. How'd you like working with them? Was that fun for you? Well, I didn't really work with them. I told them, I said, I can't lip sync. I don't want 100 models running through my video, you know, hanging from the ceiling, being tortured, or this, that, and the other thing. <clears throat> I don't want the plot of the song enacted, please. Mm -hmm. And I'd really be happiest if I'm not in it. They said, you're the perfect vehicle for us. We've got this robot we worked on with Herbie Hancock, you know, and we'll do a plastic cast to your face. And they did. And I said, you want to be there? I said, no, that was it. How'd you like watching this robot that looked like you face fall off? I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. But my mom didn't. <laughs> what did she say? She said, Lou, I really tried to like it. But that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I just can't bear it. 
Lou's mom may not be able to bear it, but fans can. They made his current single. This is a family program. <laughs>